So as you can see, I'm uh, playing a bit of Battlefield 3, which is uh, kind of back to basics for Battlefield as a whole, which is a, a bit of the trend to the video today, but also principally because uh, the new PC upgrade that I've received is so much fun to play on, and it's a huge challenge and learning curve trying to get to know how to play PC properly and all the ins and outs and all the fun variables. Do I want to toggle crouch or do I want to hold crouch? And it's been all these things that I've been uh, learning over the last couple of days, which have been quite challenging, but also a lot of fun. But it also has given me the chance to play older Battlefield games and get back into the feel of them as well, which is where this video comes today. And this is my personal wish list for Battlefield 5. Now, Battlefield as a franchise, sometimes I feel does not learn from its predecessors well enough. Sometimes I feel as though it travels off the path a bit, tries something new, and new doesn't work all the time. That's not to say we can't innovate, but it also means at the same time that we need to be kind of allocating our resources in the right places. So I'm going to do like a quick wish list of things that I want to see in the next Battlefield for this video today. Now. Principally, to start off with, we have to get the setting right for the next battlefield. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of bored of this whole mess of modern shooters, which are completely oversaturated these days. And it feels like Frostbite has the potential to really captivate a previous generation of warfare. Like, for example, could you imagine the power of, per se, a Frostbite 3 engine on Battlefield 1942? That's a prospect that I personally think is an really incredible. And also imagine like Battlefield Vietnam on Frostbite 3. It's just so much potential sitting there for a previous generation of warfare or maybe even dare I say it's slightly futuristic if they get it right but I'd rather they went backwards to do really well and I feel like the problem here is that DICE and EA as a whole probably more on EA's partake as a publisher, are not really willing to go out on a limb and test whether or not this would be worth their time. So back, for example, in like the 2000s, modern military shooters weren't really a thing. It was all about old World War II shooters. And eventually the same thing happened. Oversaturation occurred. We saw lots of military shooters all World War II'd up and it just wasn't fun anymore. And now the same things happen with modern shooters, and it has to be for one company or one group to say, do you know what, actually, we're going to go back to World War One, World War Two, Vietnam, Cold War, and we're going to try there and try something different. So the saying for me, in my personal opinion, would have to be Cold War, World War Two, or maybe even the Vietnam War and get one of those right, choose one of them, lock them down, and really dedicate themselves to this time frame. I don't really care for customization, I love character customization, I love being able to mess around with things, but if character customization has to be sacrificed, or, you know, gun customizations have to be reduced in order to accommodate a different time frame, I'd be perfectly happy with that, and I feel a lot of players will be as well, as long as we, uh, brush up our iron sight design a bit more, then we should be fine. So next on my wish list is uh, actually something I learnt quite recently, in fact, which was incredibly shocking to me. This is through Westy's video, which will be in the description below as well if you want to check that out. And uh, he mentioned that the Battlefield 4 map design was actually done by the artistic team over the actual level design team. So the people who were paid and employed to design these levels at a very professional scale were overhauled in terms of artists. Now don't get me wrong, I appreciate the artistic style in Battlefield 4, it's a stunning game to play, but I really feel like the map design in Battlefield 4 isn't all that great, it is, is actually probably some of the worst I've seen, in fact my only map that I like is probably Goldmud Railway, and that's just principally because I can use tanks, even that isn't that well designed, you know? There's no real standout map. For example, in Battlefield 3, you can see the gameplay I'm playing here today, Metro and Davavan Peak were godly. They were the design bombs of the 21st century. They are like two of the most well-designed maps in gaming Battlefield history, you know? And they've stayed on and lived on, Karg Island as well being one of them, have lived on through the generations principally because they are so good that people just want to emulate them again. Now, I don't know where this happened. I don't know where this sudden spur, should we say, that came from, where they were just like, do you know what, actually, let's give the guy who draws in the grass the opportunity to change an entire map design. Now, obviously, like I'm saying, no disrespect to the people who have artistically designed Battlefield 4, but in terms of map design, they have got it so wrong. That it is completely wrong in every way possible. 
And that, that certainly never needs to happen again. Now, my next one on the list is to actually use Frostbite better, and this kind of ties in with my last point as well. Now, Frostbite for Battle for 4 was used for Levolution. It was like the most amazing thing in the world. It was marketed the crap out of, and I feel as though this has to also do with the fact that the artistic team were chosen over the level design, uh, because I feel like f the Levolution system, as well as the artistic prowess of Battlefield were basically just used as marketing and nothing else. See, when I first saw Levolution, I thought, okay, tactically change the map. I can do an event which will change the map in some seismic way, which will make things so much more different and tactically different as well. That was never the case when we actually got the game. It was just, ooh, look at this pretty destruction, which may or may not destroy your frame rate. And it just, it doesn't feel right. It's its not meant to be there for that principal reason. Frostbite has such potential to do these amazing things, and we used it on a marketing gimmick. And that's all it is, to be honest with you. Levolution on a whole scale is a gimmick. It doesn't do anything for the map in most circumstances. So, literally, Frostbite, with this amazing capability of all of these wonderful things of destruction could have had something which was so amazing but essentially ended up with something which was look we can make a siege of shanghai tower fall for our lovely trailer okay cool we get that and i understand the need to entice players for to come to battlefield to try battlefield out and see that it's a good game worth your time but i don't believe through marketing and marketing evolution that we need to do it in that kind of way. Now the reason I picked up Battlefield as an early player, I started on Battlefield Bad Company 1, didn't really play it that much, moved on to Bad Company 2 and started playing the crap out of it, was principally because of word of mouth. I had heard that this game was technologically advanced, had tons of crazy graphics, and was just good fun to play. It was a tactical shooter that people loved and adored. I didn't play it because I heard that a skyscraper could collapse. Uh, that didn't bother me, it was just about the fact that, okay, is this game going to be something which looks good, plays well, and has tacticality about it? And it did have all of those, it ticked all of those boxes, and I feel as though the best way to market a game is through word of mouth about how good it is, not about showing off how much we can use an engine and stress it so much. Now, I'm not 100% certain, but from what we've seen of Star Wars Battlefront in the E3 trailers, it looks like the Levolution events are actually the objectives themselves, so the at walkers. Now, obviously, I don't know really if that's the case, but it certainly looks like that way, especially considering how they collapse and sort of sit there. But if that is the case, then that's how we need to be using Frostbite in Battlefield 5. We need to be using it as an objective-based piece. We don't need to be using it as a something which doesn't really change anything, and that really does bother me. And my final point is to choose, and this is a big choice. It's realism or esports. Now, this is something which you probably can't associate, they just don't work well together. You can't have a very realistic game and have a very esports related game. I don't think that that happens very often, and if it does, it is a miracle. But essentially, Battlefield has always tried saying, oh yeah, look, we've got all this amazing realism and tactical a shooter ability and we've got all of this stuff that we can do but also it's trying to say yeah esports now it hasn't really done esports a lot there are guys at esl level bf who have been working their arse off to try and get it to actually happen at proper scale but they haven't dedicated themselves to it i feel as though in battlefield 5 they need to choose are we going to go for a realistic immersive game or are we going to go for esports choose one dedicate themselves to that they dedicate themselves to realism, let's see more particle effects, let's see more animations, let's see things refined. If they go for esports, let's see options in Levolution and options in the Frostbite engine being disabled, like motion blur and suppression systems, let's see that taken down. As much as I adore to see Battlefield as an esports game, because I really do love playing it, and I really could see myself probably even attempting esports at Battlefield in the future, I just don't think they understand that they desperately need to dedicate themselves to that. They even need to go for 100% we're going to do esports or 100% we're going to do realism and choose between the two and make that choice off of what they think will effectively work. I think it's a great shame that Battlefield hasn't really adopted esports completely, but I also think at the same time it's a great shame that Battlefield's still trying to accommodate it when it clearly hasn't put down the dedication. So guys, that's it for my video today. I hope you've enjoyed the Battlefield 3 footage. This was a pain in the ass to record because I really am not that great at PC yet. I'm getting the hang of it still. And uh, you'll definitely see lots more gameplay like this soon. Lots of throwbacks going on. And I'm really looking forward to that. As always, thank you for watching, fellas. And I will see you again in the next video.